Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, so let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So first, I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Let me know how your guys' weekend is going down in the comments below. Um, I know that it has been exciting so far with the price action that we have been seeing in this market, kind of leading into, of course, Sunday, which is the monthly and weekly candle close of crypto. And I do believe that we pump into it. We'll most likely see about 25K. Um, I do believe that this is a bull trap. And no, that is not me, you know, being negative or anything like that. I do believe that we will see a pullback down to about like 22.6K. Um, of course, I have not been FOMOing into any positions. A lot of my positions that I have been taking were, you know, around when Bitcoin was, you know, at 20.7K to about like 21K or so. Um, but on the 24 hour span and on the, you know, seven day span right now, uh, we are seeing a lot of altcoins doing some nice moves. Um, I know that one was like optimism, which was being, you know, talked about quite a bit in the discord. Uh, year in finance is also one that has been, you know, jumping out a little bit. You know, this one was really kind of spotlighted during 2020 and 2021, but yeah, we are seeing a lot of altcoin movement and, uh, I think that it is. You know, something significant right now to kind of celebrate as we have been seeing a lot of red. Again, like bear market rallies are things. We are still very well in a bear market just to kind of keep you guys level headed. Um, in terms of like Bitcoin, my guess on what will uh, eventually happen is we'll hit a nice little demand zone at around like 25K uh, to close out the weekly and monthly. And then, of course, on Monday, we will see like the S&P 500 have a slight pullback. That's where Bitcoin will have a slight pullback down to about like 22.6K, which would be a major demand support range. And then we will continue up to like 28K, which would be preferred. That's what I would like to see. It would actually be very healthy for the market. And uh, yeah, let's see what exactly happens. Now, also talking more so about markets and healthy markets, um, or if you will, unhealthy markets. Breaking news, the Swiss central bank reported a first half loss of $100.08 billion, the biggest half year and quarterly loss since 1907. Central banks continue to see losses, stock market declines, falling you know, bond prices, and the franc's appreciation severely dented the value of its massive foreign currency holdings, total mess. And yes, central banks are basically at you know, a very, very, I, I would say like inefficient stance right now around finance. Like they are battling you know, the biggest battle yet. And that is, of course, you know, economic downturn and, of course, massive inflation rates. And currently right now, like all eyes are on central banks as, you know, they are trying to propose new ways of combating like what we are basically seeing right now economically. And the issue here is that, like, we aren't seeing any acceptance of a recession. We are seeing a recession basically be redefined, uh, you know, any sort of acceptance of, you know, inflation being out of control, economic downturn, you know, being here is just kind of getting thrown out of the window. And of course it is, you know, accepted because right now we are seeing midterms come up. So they are trying to kind of sugarcoat things, but you can only sugarcoat things so far until something breaks and central banks are basically at that weakening point. And you know, a lot of people I've been seeing argue that like central bank digital currencies fixes this. It doesn't. They only, you know, show transparency. So systemic risk could be, you know, caught earlier, uh, which I do completely agree with. Like, I do think that they could help alleviate like a 2008 financial crisis. But we are basically too far gone at this current moment in time to actually fix anything. Like, I think that we need to have, you know, a recession ushered in in order to see any sort of combating of inflation rates and economic downturn. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of time to actually get back into a bullish standpoint around these markets. Not saying that, you know, crypto won't see a bull market. I do think that by around like 2023 into 2024, that's going to be the time frame to really kind of watch for. Now, also talking about a few things around crypto we do see over here. It is midway through 2022. Since 2015, Ripple targeted XRP for cross-border payments. This clip just shows you how difficult it is to disrupt the incumbent, you know, banking and financial services industry. Warning to XRP holders, this video is painful to watch and yes it is because they are disregarding exactly what xrp is here to do um they are more so talking about like libra and also shout out to kevin cage for actually you know showing this on his channel definitely go check him out but uh yeah this is from the block uh the blackrock uh ceo larry fink if you guys don't know who he is you definitely should know who he is if you guys don't know who you know what blackrock is it is basically an investment management company with 10 trillion dollars in assets under management and they have worked with some you know very prestigious banks out there uh they you know know exactly what is you know inefficient around you know finance right now as well um definitely look into blackrock if you haven't of course they have been you know major 
you know, investors into like some crypto, uh, you know, companies like for example, Circle. And uh, yeah, in terms of, you know, what they are talking about here, it's more so the inefficiencies around going overseas and basically depositing money or even withdrawing money. And they ask you like, you know, euros or dollars, you know, whatever you take, basically you're getting hit with like a 3% or even higher percentage, uh, you know, fee on that you know, deposit or withdrawal. And that's basically what Larry Fink is also talking about here. And of course you do see like, yeah, just listen closely. It's very, it's very painful to watch, but it's also something significant when, you know, we are seeing like Larry Fink, who is like the CEO of a massive, you know, management company talking like this around like crypto technology and possibly talking about like where we could see crypto, uh, you know, be in position going forward. I mean, if you're going to launder money, the, the, it's been cash up to this point. So, I mean, Bitcoin is probably... Or jewels. You, yeah. Okay. But Bitcoin probably for, for total money laundering is probably 0. 0.0005. So why pick on Bitcoin for the money laundering when it's, it's it obviously hasn't been used up to... Al Capone never had any Bitcoin. So I, I assume you're also talking about Libra then too. I don't want to... Libra, I don't even think is a cryptocurrency. I don't either. That's what I was going to say. And I don't think it has any inherent value. And, it's a debit and, I, and I don't want... It's centrally... I mean, and Mark Zuckerberg is involved and everybody gets to keep the but float. All the let's talk about the concept though. Yeah. Forget about who's created it and what it's trying to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was in Europe this past week. I had to buy a new briefcase because mine broke actually there. Um, when what, I would carrying cash? <laughs> <laughs> to launder? All jewels. Yeah, no. yeah, all right. um, and um, when I was going to sign the, the receipt uh, or the electronic yeah. thing, they'd asked me, do I want to pay in euro or dollar? Yeah. And I said, okay, dollar. Then I looked at it. I'm still being charged a 3%. Terrible. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and when you think about all the people who send money, you know, they may work in one country, send money back home. They generally do that through organizations that charge 5 to 10%. Yeah. There is a need, whether it's a Libra or something else, to democratize the exchange of foreign currencies. Today, with computers and electronic market, there the, shouldn't be that it should be 10 basis points, 5 right. basis right. points. That it's not sense. percent. And so I actually believe the idea around Libra, I don't think we need to create a new currency, but the technology to instantaneous uh, calibrate all the currencies, that should be done. Right. Who gets squished by that? Who are the money, the oh. middleman who are making money on that? The banks. You know, we're making that. And notice what he just said there. What are the, like, who are the individuals that get squashed by that? The banks. That is also why, you know, Ripple has been, like, the major target point around, like, the SEC lawsuits. Because they want to protect the banks. They want to protect the bankers. Like they are making money hand over fist from all of these massive fees. And also what he's saying, like, you know, there needs to be something that can instant, you know, taneously basically, you know, go in and, uh, you know, transact these currencies or if you will, convert these currencies in an instant time frame um, and basically pay zero fees, if you will. And that's exactly what RippleNet with XRP is doing so. And listen closely for the rest of this. The, as the Bitcoiners would say, that, that's progress for you. At least to get to the point where you're saying that about Libra. No, you're but, still not saying it about Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin, but, has, but even, Bitcoin, Bitcoin has blockchain. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin well, I don't know is, if Libra is blockchain. They haven't decided. It, yeah, it might do. It, it, it has to be some it's form not, of that. It's just ledger. I mean, right, but it's, it's a yeah. basket of, current, of fiat currencies. It's like, you but you know, don't but need the crypto that. There's no one here in value. But you don't need that. If you had this mechanism in every transaction, you could minimize the transaction cost. And they also do talk about like the basket of currencies, um, you know, SDR, if you will, as well. Yeah, I mean, like we wouldn't need that if we adopted in something like the XRP system. Obviously, you know, we are still ways away from that. But, uh, you know, I do think that we are getting to that point. We, we need to do something with this because, of course, like the fees are uh, extremely out of hand. Um, I think that the current payment system is very inefficient as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that this is a very significant interview and also does prove like, listen, I'm just going to say it. Larry Fink knows exactly what XRP is. He just described XRP to the T and he's talking about how revolutionary that could essentially be. And, uh, these are individuals that work within finance. Like these are individuals that have direct exposure to massive major banking names. So they know the inefficiencies around this sector, um, you know, basically on the forefront, if you will. So yeah, I do believe that he knows what XRP is doing. I, I think that he understands the, the power behind it and the technology behind it. And I also do believe that like, you know, 
What Ripple has been targeting for the longest time and really trying to revolutionize is exactly what caught them in the SEC lawsuit. Now, also, we do see here in the latest XRP Markets report, we discussed the crypto credit crisis, on-demand liquidity, you know, growth in new markets and major brands, uh, you know, betting on XRP Ledger in quarter two, 2022. And uh, yes, I actually do uh, have this over here opened up. I actually do have this uh, search on-demand liquidity. Because again, like there's a ton of info, you know, here, if you guys do want to, you know, check it out, you guys are more than welcome to go check it out and uh, read the entire thing. I don't want to, you know, spend too much time just kind of talking about like NFTs and stuff like that. You guys probably want to know like the juiciness around this. And that is more so like on demand liquidity. Of course, like that is the powerhouse behind XRP's value, if you will. Um, but of course they do here, you know, say, you know, Fincy leverages on demand liquidity, you know, Ripple enters the new market, Lithuania money transfer provider Fincy. Uh, which we talked about, which is leveraging, you know, XRP for crypto, you know, enabled cross-border payments. Um, they talk more so about it, you know, how it is, you know, enabling, you know, customers to make seamless payments between Europe and, you know, Mexico. On-demand liquidity in quarter two of 2022 was a record, you know, quarter for, you know, on-demand liquidity as volume grew considerably with over 9x year-over-year -year growth. Customers continue to expand the use of on-demand liquidity for use cases beyond traditional remittances or individual payments with treasury flows and bulk payments accounting for more volume on the network. And of course, they do, you know, talks about like the sales from Ripple themselves. Yes, um, Ripple has continued to engage in sales solely related to on-demand liquidity and these volumes have ramped up substantially as Ripple's on-demand liquidity business uh, you know, expand it globally. And of course, yes, they do share the on-demand liquidity related sales here. You know, it basically doubled from one quarter to the other. Now, of course, a lot of people will look at this and say, you know, Ripple is still dumping on their investors, blah, blah, blah. This is for on-demand liquidity services themselves. So again, like this is all, you know, how the system actually works in terms of like liquidity. And uh, we actually do see down here like global XRP volume dollars and you know millions this did drop but this is also because like the value of xrp did drop as well and of course you know ripple has been a buyer of xrp in the secondary market and expects to continue to undertake purchases at future market prices as on-demand liquidity continues to gain global you know mon um, momentum and uh, they do talk about the price down here they also do talk about like escrow the stand is full finally out of tacos in terms of like jed mccaleb's you know wallet basically being empty and uh, they also talk about like the XRP ledger community itself. And uh, yeah, so I think that this is very exciting. I think that we are seeing a lot more growth, 9x year over year, which is something pretty significant. And also, we are making some historical, you know, moments here. Uh, you know, excited to share that we just put into, you know, production the, you know, first version of the National Land Registry together with um, a gen uh, sorry. Agencia Tierras, I hope that I'm saying that right, and the support of Ripple to register the first um, education resolution in Colombia on the XRP ledger, and you do see that down here. Uh, you love to see it. Like this is, you know, historical use cases around like NFTs on, of course, the XRP ledger. Of course, I'm not the only one to mention this. We do see, you know, Kevin Cage saying, you know, National Land Registry all on the XRP ledger, and this is historical for the XRP ledger as it is just yet another use case being spotlighted for the XRP ledger. And I do believe that they actually mentioned that over here as well. Um, yeah, PeerSite, they do mention it here in terms of like another NFT project. Like I said, very exciting. I think that when we are really kind of looking at the growth around like Ripple and we are seeing like the major updates around, you know, Ripple as well, things like this is, you know, what we want to see. I think that this is what we should be accepting as well in terms of like, you know, major announcements. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.